The following WGRI program is sponsored by the Ecclesia of Cincinnati. Welcome to Glimpses of the Kingdom, the program that will encourage and inspire you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Glimpses of the Kingdom is a program that will transform the way you think about the Lord Jesus, the Bible, and the kingdom of God. And now, here's your host for Glimpses of the Kingdom, Elder Ron Mosby. Carl, thank you so very much, and welcome, everyone, once again to this week's edition of Glimpses of the Kingdom. I am so excited today because I think we have a, a, a full show, right? Oh, Steve? yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. So first, I, of course, have to say hello to my dear brother in the face, Steve Peterson. Yes, sir. And our guest today, uh, a very dear brother and friend of mine, Mike Sanger. Hey. How is everyone today? Awesome. Good, awesome. good. Okay, mm-hmm. so I know we don't. We only have 30 minutes. I want to say welcome to everyone who is not only joining us on the radio, but also those that are on Periscope. Remember, if you have any questions uh, for Mike as we get into the interview, feel free. You can just type them in, and I'll make sure to get them over to him. So before we begin, of course, I did want to remind everyone that, uh, well, of two things. Number one, if you haven't already purchased a copy of the book, uh, A Glimpse of the Kingdom, you can do so. You can go to uh, www.ronmosbybooks.com or you can also get it at amazon.com. And also the reminder, as I usually do each week, uh, that we are doing the study on the kingdom of God and we're using that book by John Bright. It's been very helpful, Steve. Yes, it has. Uh, I mean, it really gives a, a, a great perspective on the Old Testament. I yes, think it, it helps to enlighten. God's walk with the Jews. Right, and it yes. helps us to understand the gravity of that term, yes. kingdom of God. So uh, if you would like to join us for that, you can feel free to give us a call, 541-0030. But we meet at 4230 Hamilton Avenue on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. And if you are not in the area, you can also join us uh, on the conference call. So we, we have it uh, two ways. You can join us there, right, or on the call. All right. So this week, Mike, this uh, this show belongs to you. Yes, um, this is <laughs> Mike. I think probably what we should do is probably begin, obviously, telling the audience a little bit about yourself. We can just briefly okay. kind of talk about how we met, and then let's get into a few things because uh, I know that God has really blessed you, put a burden on your heart for a very important topic, and, and I don't want to say it right now, but I want to get into it uh, <laughs> as we start to get into your book, The the Simple Truth. Sure, sure. So go right ahead. Okay, so um, my name's Mike Sanger. I was born in uh, Coral Gables, Florida, down in the good old town of Miami. Um, not Ohio, but Florida. Right. <laughs> and um, hated that place. Could not wait to leave. I finally got the opportunity, moved up to uh, North Carolina, and then uh, was there for several years and then ended up in Ohio uh, due to my wife being laid off and not being able to find a job in uh, uh, Charlotte. So we ended up here, which I think is a God thing, and we just love being in Ohio. It's awesome. But um, I uh, became a Christian back when I was in college. I worked as a volunteer for Youth for Christ, and that's how I got to be saved um, met a youth pastor, and he kind of led me to the Lord. Uh, but my, my learning about Christ was, took a very long time. I guess I'm very, very stubborn um, or pig-headed or whatever. But um, I, I made a commitment, but I had no clue what I was doing. And um, it was years later before I understood that, and then many years after that before God really opened my eyes and my heart to what he had called me to do with my life. And, and all of that comes from, and we don't have time to go through too much of it, but my whole life has been a very um, mixed bag of uh, abuse and all kinds of things from my family. But through that, God used it to put a burden on my heart for people who have wounded souls, mm-hmm. who, who, who feel like God doesn't care, mm-hmm. like there's no point for them or no place for them on this planet kind of thing. And, and I have a real burden because I understand that. Mm-hmm. And, and God desperately wants to heal those people because every one of us, I believe, and I believe the Bible teaches this, is here for a reason. And, and that's the real point of, of the book, The Simple Truth, and what it's all about. Yeah, so he took your suffering to develop you 
to be able exactly. to reach out to other people. Exactly. Yes. And, and that's what Scripture tells you. He comforts us so that mm-hmm. we can comfort others. So he takes us through things to understand in a lot of our suffering. He did that with Paul. Mm-hmm. He did that with Peter. Um, he our did ministries exactly. and our testimony. Exactly. Everything we go through. In our ministry, we say there are no coincidences. Nothing happens without a reason. God right. has a purpose for everything. And in those purposes, he's either teaching us or molding us Amen. or doing that for someone else who's watching us. And that's how we grow. And he makes us aware of things so that we're able or better able to do and be what he's called us to be. Amen. So before we do begin to get into the book, um, one of the things I really wanted you to share, of course, and and I think this is how we'll do this because it'll lead right into the the book anyway. But uh, as you just said, you know, you've already pointed out that there's a burden on your heart for wounded souls. But it kind of leads to the very thing that, you know, you you really talk about in general, which is this real focus on relationships. Mm-hmm. But I wanted you to share a story that you share with me because I learned a lot from it. It was an, a, an anecdote uh, that you that your brother, I believe, yes. had experienced. And this is about marriage. And so. For those of you that are married, I think it's very important that you hear this because it's a, it, once again, it's a simple truth, but it's one of those truths that we don't really take the time to pay attention to when we enter into a covenant of marriage. Yeah. So why don't you take a couple of minutes and share that? Okay, let me uh, kind of set the stage here. Um, my my family came from a very... Um, I'll call it a religious background, but it wasn't really a religious background. It was more in show than it was anything else. Um, but uh, so, so we were taught, this is how you do things, okay? Mm-hmm. So when we ran into other people who didn't do them the same way, our understanding was they were wrong. So we had this situation where I was vis- visiting my brother down in Miami um, several years back and around Christmas time, and uh, we were driving to the store because he was buying more lights for his Christmas tree. And as we were going, it was obvious he was upset. And so he was sharing with me that um, he was very upset with his wife because she didn't know how to decorate a Christmas tree. And so I'm like, okay, well, explain it. Well, she wants to do it this way, and she wants to do it this this way, and it's supposed to be done this way. And I asked him, Anthony, um, do you realize that the way you learned to decorate a Christmas tree is because that's how you were trained when we were kids. This is how we did it. But your wife was trained in a totally different place. So her, her thinking is it's this way and your thinking is this way. Neither one of them is right, but neither one of them is wrong. Amen. So together, now it's your opportunity as a unit to come up with your own way. Right. Whatever that is. And, and that's such a deep truth that we all forget that we are trained as we grow up and we experience um, any life. kind of situations yeah, in, life. in life that we are trained to think a certain way, uh, programmed, if you will, to think a certain way. And exactly. So when we deal with situations, the only thing we have is to go back to what we understand because we're trained that way. Right. And it's very difficult for us to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and understand where their perspective is coming from so that we can be united. But that's exactly what the Bible is telling us to do. Right. I mean, if we look at it, two, two very quick things. First of all, all we need to do is look at the relationship that God had with Israel, right? Two unique beings, one obviously eternal. This nation of Israel is a small nation, the smallest of all the nations. They enter into a covenant relationship, right. one of the likes of which has never been seen before, right? Exactly. Every marriage is the same way. Two human, unique human beings exactly. coming together, coming from two different backgrounds, Mm -hmm. Two different, uh, completely different experiences forming a unique individual covenant unlike anything else in the world, right? Exactly. 
Love the love the anecdote. I really hope that those of you that are listening really pay attention to that. If you are on uh, Periscope, welcome to the program. If you missed it, make sure that you go back and listen. It's invaluable. All right. Having said that, let us move on. Mike, uh, Mike, if you could hold that book up, that would be great, right? Not so much for the radio audience, but for our Periscope <laughs> listeners. So Mike is the author of The Simple Truth, and we are going to talk about this book for a few minutes. Mike, why don't you do a couple things. Tell us what inspired you to write the book. Talk a little bit about what the book is about. I know that my dear colleague, my dear friend, Steve has a few questions. And if we get some questions from uh, the Periscope audience or from our listening audience, I want to make sure we get those in as well. Sure. Be happy to. Um, I, I First of all, I am the only person in my family of uh, four brothers, one sister, and my parents um, who actually know the Lord. Uh, they They have grown up in the Catholic faith, but they have not placed their faith in Jesus Christ, uh, nor do they really follow anything. So um, my brother had called me, and, and this brother, Paul, who's a year younger than me, um, has a wife who is going through breast cancer for the second time. And normally my brother's a pretty up guy, uh, even when he's going through difficulties. And, and so I had talked to him just to see how she was doing. And they had just got back from a doctor from doing a biopsy, being told about the results. And I have never heard my brother speak in such a way where there was absolutely no energy in his voice. I mean, he was just totally uh, wiped out from this. And so I was praying at the time I'm on the phone with him. Lord, give me a way to talk to them, to share with them, because they don't listen to what I say. You know, they don't want to hear that kind of stuff. So I'm saying, give me some way to share this truth with them, because they were believing that my sister-in-law was going to pass away from this, that it was going to be, it was going to win. And so as I prayed, he said to me very clearly, write a book. And I'm like, okay, I've done that before, so what do you want me to do? And he says, the title of the book is called The Simple Truth. And it's all about how simple the Bible is. And, and the, the whole image he gave me was, if you were to take the Bible and boil it down into one word, <laughs> that word would be relationships. We Amen. have a relational God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He created us to have a relationship with us. Um, he had a relationship with Israel, and through Israel, he was going to build a relationship to the rest of the world. It is all about relationships. And first of all, and there's two kinds, the vertical between us and the Father, us and Jesus, it's a vertical relationship, and the horizontal between Amen. us and other people. And uh, so you, you go into Matthew 22, <clears throat> and you look at where the Pharisees were confronting Jesus and asking him, okay, well, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, well, the, the one is to love, the, you love your father with all your heart, mind, right. and soul, right? Mm -hmm. The second was like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So, so right there he was saying, your main focus is that relationship vertically, and then just like it, secondly, is the relationship horizontally. And by the way, by the way, let's make this clear too. Those two are not distinct. Right, because you cannot have a vertical relationship if you don't have a horizontal. How right. can you say you love God, and don't love but you don't neighbor. love your brother? Exactly. Right, exactly. So They're the two are interdependent. Very, very. Yeah, and and yet, as you develop this deeper vertical relationship, you are helping the horizontal relationship Amen. because the the deeper the vertical the more like Christ you become. And the more like Christ you become, like John says, out of you will flow rivers of living water. Amen. It will flow over without you trying. It will just come out to other people. And that's that's kind of the thing that uh, the people were um, so enamored by Jesus and came to him because it was just flowing out of him, and they were drawn to him. And that's what God's going to do with people around us. Amen. And so people that come in and out of our lives are there for a purpose, they, it's not an right. accident. They're there. So either they're contributing to our growth or we're contributing to their growth. Amen. Amen. One of the two. You're listening here to Mike Sanger, author of the book, The Simple Truth. We are here, we, myself, and uh, Steve P. And uh, Steve, I think you may have had some questions that you wanted to ask Mike. Well, I have a comment right now about getting that vertical and that 
horizontal relationship going when you were talking about uh, the Christmas tree and how we are brought up in certain ways and we are trained to do things in certain ways and that's all we know. But when we come in contact with the truth of God, then we have to get rid of all those things, all that training. We have to learn to empty ourselves out to let God in so that we can have the vertical relationship but then it manifests here through the horizontal relationship. Exactly. So as we develop this vertical, we learn where our wrong thinking is and where our right thinking is. So God's trying to straighten out this stuff. But understanding our wrong thinking gives us the ability to understand why other people have wrong thinking Amen. and where it comes from. So the whole point of that is to help us have compassion on other people for what they're going through and where they are so that we can come alongside them, bear up their burdens, Amen. and help them through what they're going through. I mean, that's the point of us being here. I mean, mm. Jesus told us that our job for being on this planet after we're, um, we become believers, we accept him as our Savior, the only reason we remain here is to make disciples. Amen. That's our job. Everything else is secondary to us making disciples. And so we have to look at everything in our lives as a food for that, something that helps us do that. Our jobs, our families, our schooling, our work, whatever it is. Our Where church, God's placed us. Wherever. And that's our calling. And we teach uh, in, a, in a book that came out of, or a series that came out of The Simple Truth, which was called RPC, which is called Relationship, Purpose, and Calling. Do you need a minute? <laughs> oh my God, I, 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 I'm smiling because <laughs> I'm smiling because uh, one of our uh, listeners here on Periscope was saying that your book, The Simple Truth, sounds like the practicality of the kingdom. That's Elder Will Thomas, by the way. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that you, that, that you knew that. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. I'm good for that. Um, but in, in our RPC um, course that we teach, uh, which stands for, again, Relationship, Purpose, and Calling, we, we established the fact that those are the three main reasons God created us. One, to have a relationship to, with, with him. Two, he gave us gifts for a reason. The gifts he gave us are an indication of what he wants us doing with, his life, with our life. Amen. He gives us those gifts, right? And then he has a calling for us. He has a place where we're supposed to be using those gifts. And so in understanding that and learning about that, we can better utilize the life that God has placed around us to do what he has called us to do. Amen. So the, the simple truth basically gets back to, and what really got me started on this besides the thing with my brother, was this whole concept of righteousness. And so we look at righteousness and we, we, we see in the scriptures that uh, – People early on in the Bible, like Abraham, like Noah, um, were, were considered righteous. So right. the question then becomes, what was the measurement that they, measuring tool that they used to declare these people righteous? Because remember, Abraham Noah came long before the law was ever given. So prior to that law being given, what was the measuring stick? Right. And the only measuring stick that was there was this relationship. If they had a relationship, they were considered righteous. Sure. Abraham was considered righteous because he believed God, and that's why he was righteous, not because some law called him righteous. Um, right. They, turned, yeah. they both turned their hearts away from the world and to follow God. God. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And also, Elder Will had another uh, comment in there. He was saying, I guess, kind of very similar to your RPC, uh, relationship calling and truth is mm -hmm. what he put in there. And that is mm -hmm. true, right? We have to have that truth as that foundation. Right. But I, uh, I appreciated what you just said. You're right, because, you know, I, there's a word that was given to me and I had to understand this, mm -hmm. but um, we can't even properly function in our purpose um, unless we have the significance 
that we are supposed to receive from the Father. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that comes to relationship, and that's what happens. There are a lot of well-meaning mm-hmm. saints, right? Mm-hmm. The, the believers, but they walk frustrated mm-hmm. because they themselves have not received the significance that they are supposed to receive. And it is about relationship right. because every father, you know, as we've said, right, mothers nurture, fathers give significance. Right. So we all need to re- to to get that uh, significance. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That is true. <laughs> all right. We are going to. I just wanted to make sure we had somebody say he's got to get a copy of your book. I wanted to know how, but we will do that (laughs) toward the end of the show. We will make sure that you get plenty of time to let everybody know about how they can contact you, the ministry, and how they can get a copy of the book. Absolutely. Something that's resonating with me right now from this conversation is how God prepares us through our suffering as he prepared Christ through his suffering, but it's it's only to prepare us to be able to bear our brother's burdens wow yeah that's powerful steve yeah Yeah. it really is and you're right i mean every you know every when we're suffering for christ Mm -hmm. i want to make that distinction right because sometimes we suffer because of our own deeds exactly disobedience yeah Mm -hmm. disobedience ignorance sometimes yes but when we're following christ and we suffer for the sake of christ you're right it Mm -hmm. is preparing us Mm -hmm. and then here mike is talking about this compassion right so that we can have the understanding and compassion that we need in order to help others yes so it's always building us so that we have something else to pass on right to that next generation Right, and, and we can actually suffer because we're doing what we believe is a godly thing, but it's not the thing that Christ wants us or that God wants us to be doing. Yeah, we can get so involved with church and doing the right thing, but it's not what we're called to do. And because of that, we can suffer ourselves. Correct, and other people can suffer because we're not doing what we should be doing. That kind of a thing, and so it's very important for us to recognize. What are our gifts? What did God gift me with? Because that's the beginning point of understanding, why am I here? If I understand what those gifts are and what I'm supposed to be doing and what talents I have, then I can better understand what I should be focusing on in my life. And then it's a matter of, okay, Lord, I see where you've placed me. If there's no coincidence, there's there's no coincidence I'm where I am. Amen. But, you know, I will say this about that. Um, what I have learned, once again, experience has shared, you're, you're right. A person does need to discover where their strengths, their graces are. But you know how that comes? Through servanthood. Exactly. Yes. When you serve and when you're laying your own life down, what happens is you're not thinking about self. So you're not concerned about what gifts do I have? You're just outdoing. And when mm-hmm. you do that, the, mm-hmm. the gifts and graces make room for themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And that goes back to what I was saying. When we recognize that right. the whole reason we're here is to make disciples. You don't make disciples by focusing on yourself. You make disciples Amen. by focusing outward. Right. And that's what the gifts are for. None of the gifts are for us. Amen. Right. They're all for everybody else. Right. They're not to consume to, for exactly. ourselves, not to keep within ourselves. So, again, that's also an indication that we are built for relationships. It's all about So every time you go into something, you come back to that same point. It's all about the relationship. Amen. So we need to be focusing on that. Right. And looking at, hey, I understand this is what I need, so I need to understand my, my gifts. Use them where I am. Now, if God wants to move you, he's got a different calling. He will absolutely show you right. how to do that or guide circumstances to put you in a new place. We are running out of time, and I wanted to make sure I gave you plenty of time to let everyone know exactly how they can contact you, the ministry, how they can get a copy of the book. So please feel free. you got a couple of minutes. Go sure. right ahead. Okay, so we have a ministry called Arts for Messiah Ministries, uh, and you can find out all about us at artsformessiah.org, A-R-T-S-F-O-R-M-E-S-S-I-A-H.org. Um, and on that, we meet every Sunday morning at our home in 943 Old Station Court in Fairfield, Ohio. And we also meet on the second and fourth Tuesday nights for Bible study um, at the same location at 7 o'clock from 7 to 9. But so you're you a find, home church. We're a home church. Exactly. Just wanted to make sure everybody knows. And, uh, so you can find all that information out on our website. And then on our website, if you scroll down on the first page to the bottom, you'll see 
the Simple Truth book offering, but we also have a uh, bookstore where you can go to and find the book there and order it from there. Um, but we also have at the bottom, very bottom of every page on our website, our links to our partners. And one of them is a Gifted to Serve link, which is one of the best um, tests for your spiritual gifts I have ever taken. Um, so it's a very good, and we take all of our people through that to help them learn about their gifts and then uh, work from that to help them develop those. Gifts. Okay, so, so that's a good arts, resource. Arts for Messiah, A R T S F O R M E S S I A H dot O R G. So, what gave birth to that? Arts for the Messiah. Well, we, um, because uh, we also have a film background, so we're trying to make films for the Lord as well. Oh, okay. And in doing that, we began to realize that the arts were a great way to connect with people. And so we thought what we would do is use arts as our form of getting the word out, but we're not just for artists. But we'll take people who are interested in using the arts as a way to minister to people. Amen. And so that's who we're looking for, people who want to join us, who want to get involved with making films or painting or whatever, right? Right, and I was just about to say, I was glad you brought that up. We didn't talk about it earlier, but you are you are extremely talented besides the writing, and you do have other books, of course, but you are also into filmmaking, and yes. you're actually producing a, a television show. Yeah, we're working on developing a show called The Revelation Zone, right. which is a spinoff of the old Twilight Zone right. with episodes that have twists and uh, uh, narrators and um, basically deal with almost current events, but but guided towards trying to express the glory of God and who God really is. Amen. Amen. Well, Mike, thank you so much for being with us well, this week. We, oh, oh, listen, I'm glad you were able to make it. I was glad we were able to, to get Absolutely. this together. Uh, just before we leave, thank you everyone for joining on Periscope. If you, once again, if you do have any questions uh, for Mike, artsformessiah.org. A R T S F O R M E S S I A H dot org. Also, if you haven't purchased your copy of A Glimpse of the Kingdom yet, please do so. You can go to ronmosbybooks.com. You can also get it at amazon.com. Also, remember that we're having the study on the kingdom of God every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., and we're doing it at uh, 4230 Hamilton Avenue. If you if you don't live in the Cincinnati area, but you still want to join us for that study, um, you can also join us on our cell phone, excuse me, not cell phone, conference call. <laughs> our conference call, area code 712-775-7031, and then you use passcode 258-126-109-POUND. <laughs> pound, Steve. Don't forget the pound. <laughs> you got a pound. All right. So I know we're running out of time, right? I, I'm, I'm, yes. See, this is the behind the scenes that everybody doesn't see. But if we didn't have our trusty uh, producer over here, Matt, uh, we would run over. <laughs> so we don't want to do that, right? So I do want to thank everyone, though, uh, for joining us. Also, if you have any ideas or you have any questions that you would like to ask us for the show that you would like us to discuss, uh, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, you can call us at 541-0030, 541-0030. Leave us a message, and I'll make sure that we get your uh, question on so that we can discuss that. If you have some ideas for guests, I would like to hear that from you as well. Mike, everybody's getting to see you. And I mean, yeah, like... Awesome. It's like now and everybody's do, joining in. And I do believe this won't be the last time. This won't be the last time you'll be here. Well, so thank they'll you. get I to see you again. Yeah, right. I think this is a wonderful yeah. technology. I just learned a periscope today. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> you just learned it, and yeah. I'm trying to use it better, actually. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, are we good? Oh, we only, okay. <laughs> so everyone, uh, let's make sure, uh, as actually, as everyone is uh, preparing, I would like to tell you all that we are going to give you details about a very special summit that we will be having um, in April. It is a Kingdom Man Summit. I think you will really enjoy it. Uh, I'll give you more, we will be giving you more details about that in the coming weeks, but that will be the last weekend in April. So uh, please make sure to mark your calendars accordingly, April the 28th and 29th. Save the date. 
You will not want to miss this Kingdom Man Conference. So on behalf of Mike and on behalf of Steve, we want to thank you all for joining us. And Lord willing, we will be back next Thursday at 4.30 on Glimpses of the Kingdom. Thank you for tuning in this week to another insightful edition of Glimpses of the Kingdom. The staff at Glimpses of the Kingdom would love to hear from you. Whether you have a question about the Kingdom of God that you would like to discuss on the air, or if you just want to let them know you appreciate receiving a greater understanding about the Kingdom of God. Either way, give them a call at area code 513-227-2416. That's 513-227-2416. Or visit their website at F-O-G-O. C-I-N-T-I dot org. You can also connect with them on Facebook at the Ecclesia of the Lord Jesus Christ.